So in this video, we're going to talk about the concept of waves. And we're going to talk about a couple of properties of waves. So let me go ahead and draw out a graph. This is our graph, right? And let's go ahead and draw out our wave. So this is what our wave would look like. This is generally what waves look like. And they keep going. All right. So this is our wave. Now we have to figure out what properties this wave has. So first and foremost, whenever we draw a wave like this, we want to figure out, we know that one of the properties that it has is what's called amplitude. Amplitude is the height of the wave compared to the point uh, in the center, compared to the resting point. Uh, the second point, the second concept we have, to, we have to keep in mind is the concept of a wavelength. And a wavelength is the amount of time that it takes, or a wavelength, should I say, is the distance on a wave between the wave's starting point and what it takes for the wave to loop back around. So in this case, the wave does this, and then it, it goes all the way over here, and then it repeats, right? So this is just re repeating of this part of the wave. So this segment is one wavelength, right? And we symbolize wavelength with the Greek letter lambda. This is the variable for wavelength. And then the third point, the third uh, variable that we should be aware of is what's called the frequency. And the frequency of a wave is the amount of, uh, the, the, the units of frequency are seconds inverse, otherwise known as per second. And it's essentially the, the number of wavelengths that pass a particular point, let's say the point is right here, the number of wave, wavelengths that pass a particular point each second. So we can relate these variables using a very special equation. And that equation is C. C is the speed, the speed of our wave equals F, F is the frequency, times the wavelength. And so if we're given two of the three variables, we can figure out the third variable. And it's relatively straightforward. Uh, one of the interesting things to point out here is that is the units of each of these. So units of speed are meters per second. And distance, typically it's distance per second. Um, so for example, we could do micrometers, nanometers, millimeters. Uh, it doesn't, the, the, the specific prefix doesn't really matter. We, we would want to convert. Uh, and then frequency is measured in per second. And wavelength is measured in distance or meters. And so when you're looking for units, we don't usually write frequency as, as this, as per second or second inverse. Typically, the unit of frequency is going to be given in hertz. right? And hertz is just another name for this unit. And wavelength is typically given in distance. So when we're given two of the three variables and we're asked to determine wavelength or to, to determine uh, frequency, what we want to do is we want to uh, use this equation. And the last point I'd like to make is that we can combine waves. So we can have waves that are superimposed on each other, and then we can combine them. So as an example, let's say we had another wave that, oops, let's say we had another wave that instead of doing this, does, does this, right? And it goes like this, and then it goes like this, and then it goes like this. So this is an interesting wave. Uh, now let's say we had a, let's make a third example. Let's do a third example. And let's say that this example um, is the same as the yellow one. So it does this, it does this, and then it does this, right? It's the same. So if we combine the yellow and the pink waves, then what would happen is we would end up with a wave that's much taller so let me zoom out a little bit so we can see that a little better. So we would end up with a wave that looks essentially, let's use the red. Let's use red for the combination of that. So our wave would look like this. It's a bit exaggerated maybe, but it would be about twice as tall as the previous wave. And it would also be twice as tall downward. So in other words, the amplitude would be doubled. And it would remain at these nodes here. 
So these are called what we would call nodes. And so it would remain at the, the same nodes because when we add, both the waves are at zero here. So when we add zero, we get zero. But assuming, let's say the amplitude here is one, well, one plus one, we would get two. And so although the amplitude doubles, the nodes remain at where they are. And so it's fairly straightforward. Now let me erase that for a moment. Let's say instead of that, oops, Blue. Let's say instead of that, we combined a yellow and the blue wave. Well, what would happen in that case? Well, in that case, the waves would cancel each other out. And what would end up happening is we would end up with a wave that essentially does this, right? At zero, they cancel each other out at zero. Here, the, the blue wave is at its peak and uh, an amplitude of, let's say, one. And uh, the yellow wave is at an amplitude of negative one, so they would cancel each other out. And so this is, in other words, we would end up with no wave. The two waves would cancel each other out and we would end up with nothing. And this is what we would call destructive interference. Destructive interference. What about the other example? The other example that we drew earlier, the one with the, with the, the yellow wave doubled? Well, that would be known as constructive interference. Right? So this is con, I don't know why that's, that's a little hard to see. Let's just try and make it a little bit better. Constructive, that's better. Interference. And so that is the concept of waves. That's the concept of interference. And this is the concept of wavelength and frequency. The most important thing I would say to be aware of is this equation. Be aware of the units of this equation. If you're given two of the three, uh, you'll know you're given two of the three by because you're given hertz. If you're given frequency, you'll always be given hertz. Uh, if you're given wavelength, it'll be given in units of meters or more commonly nanometers or maybe micrometers, but more typically nanometers. Uh, and if you're given speed, you'll typically be told uh, speed of light or speed of sound, speed of x equals something meters per second. I mean, again, you might get it in nanometers or whatever. So that's how you solve a problem like this.